Praise the Lord. Yesterday I was talking to some group of people. I told them about the cross. And I think I should let you know. The cross. The cross, uh, this is not a message of today, but it's good you should, you should be aware. Because LTM is changing the system. Because uh, we, were, we are a little, little bit of getting some things wrong as concerns grace. Some people know faith and grace is an act of laziness, of which Paul said, show me your faith by your works. So it means, show me grace and show me faith by not telling me, by you walking. It means, faith is not faith except you walk. Grace is not grace except you keep yourself. So we, we have to understand these things. Now, I was showing them something. Uh, it's very delicate. Uh, I got this 2005, and since then, my life has changed. My life changed for good. This is, this is what put my feet down on, on, on course again after I received Christ 2004. 2005, uh, I'm sure, either 20-something of February, I received a direct teaching from the Holy Ghost about the cross. The cross is a nice thing that Jesus did, but the cross has a negative part. Praise the Lord. It has a negative part. The cross has uh, a hidden negative part that many have not seen. And Jesus himself proclaimed the negativity of the cross when he was still on earth. Now he told some people, he said, I didn't come to make peace. Wonderful. But we thought you are the prince of peace. Yeah. But I came that a girl may be at loggerhead with the mother. I came that a young man may be a logger here with the father. And one time he said, I didn't come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill it. It means the law is still existing. What I came to do is that nobody could fulfill the law. I came to fulfill it on your behalf. So that the law should now be assumed fulfilled. You have to be in Christ who has fulfilled the law. So if you're not in Christ, it means the law is still working in you. I don't know if you get me. And to be in Christ is not to be in church. To be in Christ is to do all what he said. He said, if you love me, keep my words, keep my commandment, keep my sayings. So it means if you start keeping them, you are in him. Then the law doesn't work for you. Then you are under grace. Are you getting something here? But while Jesus was on earth, I love what he said. He said, listen, many will go to hell because they decide to be pastors. Uh, That word, is it true? Extraordinarily true. Do you know why? Because uh, many people don't know. uh, Let me give you something about the cross. Before Jesus died, God was, God was, uh, uh, was, uh, I don't want to say ruling the world. God was, uh, uh, he was the head of the physical world. You, we never saw Jesus in physical at any time, although Jesus was still his word. Is that true? But we never saw Jesus at any time physical. But each time you see Moses, you see him talking with God, and little or nothing about the Holy Ghost. That was the era of God, from Genesis to Malachi. And from, Je- from Matthew to John, we saw Jesus. His era came. The word became flesh. So Jesus walked. And when Jesus was going, he sent another era. The paraclets, the Holy Ghost. So he said, he's going to be with you. So this is his own era. Now let's go back and back better to the era of God. When God was walking the face of this earth, if you insult a man of God, immediately you feel it on your body. Does that sound true? When Mary withstood Moses, the Bible said instantly she got leprous. When Gehazi overtook his master and went and collected the money, the master said not to collect. The Bible says he was leprous immediately. So that was the era of God. And to an extent, it was a nice era. Do you know why? Because when you falter, you see it immediately. I When you go against yourself, you see it on your body. You see that you are sick immediately or you are challenged. That is why in the era of God, nearly everybody who went to hell went to Abraham's bosom. Because they, were, they, they all did wrong, but immediately as God punished you, he has 
He has cancelled it. If God doesn't punish your errors, it is stuck. Now, that was the error of God. Immediately you do something to a man of God, to an apostle, sorry, to a prophet, you see it on your body, and when you are healed, you are fine with God. Once you are healed, you are fine with God. Who is getting me here? So, when God was doing that, now when Jesus came, he went to the cross and did something. There was a transition that many people could not see. One time I was teaching in Ghana, 2009, before I came to, sorry, 2011, before I came to Boya, in a conference in Accra, and uh, that was my first time to see crowd, my ever first time. And I was much more younger, <laughs> praise the Lord. And when I was talking, I, I brought this teaching out, and I'm telling you, pastors were standing. They stood till I finished. Because it, it made my life so different. 2005. I was saying it everywhere I went to. Praise the Lord Jesus. When Jesus was on the cross, he made a statement. He said, it is finished. But if it was truly finished, why are you needed? Why are you needed to accomplish something? It means it was finished in the spiritual So, as the physical is concerned, nothing is done. That is why scientists don't believe Jesus because they don't see it. They don't see the works finished. But the Bible says, all oh, his works were finished from the foundation of the earth. Now, no, the Bible says, all oh, his works were finished from the foundation, not the creation. There's a difference between creation and foundation. God created the world, Jesus found it. And then when Jesus came, that's when it was finished. But yet, we see calamities up and down. And you go back to the Bible, the Bible says, ye are the light. When you come to the world, there's darkness, so he needs you. Praise the Lord. When Jesus said, it is finished, now the Bible says, the curtain in the temple was torn into two, from top to bottom, not from bottom to top, from top to bottom, meaning it's God who's responsible for the funding of the rent, uh, renting of the cloth. When it rent into two from top to bottom, and the Bible says the Holy of Holies were made exposed. It means, what I didn't tell them yesterday, when the high priest get into the holy, when the high priest and the priest, they enter the holy place. All of them enter. And when the, the high priest is going into the Holy of Holies, they tie him a chain. Which the priest now in the, in the holy place, they hold the chain, while he enters into the Holy of Holies with a chain. So if they wait for him a long while and he's not coming out, they know that he has fought her. So as you fought her before the altar, God kills you. So what do they do? They pull him out. But surprisingly, you go to heaven. So God loves you until he doesn't want you to continue your errors. <laughs> so immediately they pull the person out. So, do you know what happened? This action, this activity that was in a closure, that the holy and the holy of holies were all closed. The Bible says the curtain was rent into two. Now it is being exposed to the world. So what was done only with the high priest and the high, the, 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 the priest is now for all Christians. That's why the Bible says he has made us kings and priests. Yes, Who made it? When he said it is finished, he made you a priest. Didn't Peter say you are a kingdom of priests, royal priesthood? Yes, it didn't come by qualification. It came by, 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 by payment. Jesus paid for you to become. Okay. Now see, see, see the negative part. Do you want to see it? The negative part is that in the days of old, when you do something wrong, immediately you get the pay. But now Jesus has covered it so that you, your wrongs should be discovered by his words. His word in the Bible should show you that you have done wrong. You should change as fast as possible. There were two people who did wrongs in the Bible. One is Judas and the other was Peter. One understood fast and changed. 
Because he looked to the master. What was the master? The word. Did the Bible says buy the word and do what? But Judas sold his. Didn't Judas say Jesus? And, and who was Jesus? The word. So Judas sold the word. It means he gave out the word. Each time the word is not in you, you have sold it away. Each time you don't have God's word in your system anymore, you have sold it away. And what happened is that you will not be able to come back away from your wrongs. I don't know if I'm communicating. So now you don't know if Lago Sepri Galada Secata Brizo. I gave them a teaching yesterday. Now, this is, the, I don't know how to put it. Uh, I need two guys who are well dressed. Uh, Daddy, someone will watch, look at them. Then you stand and look this other side. Yes, wonderful. Okay. <laughs> Did you notice you're not seeing that it's Nyantin behind? <laughs> but Simon has closed him up. Okay, now see what happens to you in the world after Jesus paid, of which is a nice stuff Jesus paid. But we need to understand that it's not a leisure time. It's not a time to just do what you think you want to do. Now, this is you on earth. This part is earth. So he is facing earth. This brother, this is him in the spirit. Am I communicating? Yeah. This is him in the spirit. Uh, I don't know. I taught them something yesterday. I'm sure I'll show you that part before I go to what I want to show you now. The Bible says, Jesus made a statement. He said, no one touching or putting his hand in a plow, looking back, is fit for the kingdom. Now, if you put your hand in a plow, it's like giving your life to Christ and then looking back. What is the meaning of looking back? One time you, you realize the story of looking back is when you realize the story of Lot and the wife. And Lot looked back. What is look back? Look back is not the geographical site. Because Moses was looking back. Abraham was looking back, sorry. When Abraham was talking with God, God was destroying Sodom. They were all facing the Sodom that God told Lot not to look. So it's not the geographical side. God said, if you put your hand in the plow and look back, you are not fit for the master's use. You are not fit for the kingdom of God. So looking back is what the wife of Lot did. So why did she look back? Now, she has left Sodom in, in haste. Because the angel said, make haste. For the Lord would destroy here with brimstones. And the Bible said they made his, him and his daughters and the wife, and they were leaving. On their way going, Lord's wife turned back, not geographically only, she turned back, meaning she was going to where God said, I will show you. you. Remember God told Abraham in Genesis 12, 1, come out from your house to a place I will show you. That means a place you are going without understanding where you are going to. Christianity looks as if you are frustrated because you are going to where you don't show you have a house. He said it looks frustrated. You are heading to somewhere. You don't know the venue. And where you are coming from, you understand it very well. You have a TV. You, have, you are known there. You own a land. And Abraham had enough riches. And God says, come out onto a place I will show you. And Abraham never looked back. Not geographically. So what's looking back? When Lord's wife left, he was, she was going ahead. Meaning she was following God. Because the angel said, come, let's go. It means the angel is ahead of them. So the angel was leading them. She was following God's word. But all of a sudden, all her riches were not with her. The, the, angel, the angel is empty-handed. But she is rich in Sodom. She left all her jewelry. She left all her riches. So, now, while she was going, look back means... Turning away and going back to the achievements of the world. Looking back, the reason why that statement is made is because when you start Christianity, it seems as if it's, you are frustrated. But there is a way that seems right, the end is destruction. It means the opposite seems wrong. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> 
The opposite seems what? Wrong. And God says, don't look back. Don't look onto the material world. The Bible says, why we look not on the things? I feel like talking to somebody here. Don't look at the natural car you have. Can you, I told some of my leaders, can you buy a car of 90 million and still go on your knees? Can you build a house of 200 million and still fast? Lucky to see, bra. I surprised them yesterday. I told them none of you is humble. They were looking at me. Even you here. There's none of you humble yet. Shall I baffle you? Shall I show you how you're not humble? Now, let me start by this. Let me see the people that I'll talk to. Who want God to bless him? That's good. It shows you're not humble. Because, listen, <laughs> I just got you, right? Let me show you how I got you. I know you have not understood how I even got you, but you just know I got you somehow. I will still get you again. Let me see who want God to bless him this service. Some people don't know whether should, God should bless them or they should bless God. Okay, if you want God to bless you, it's a nice stuff. It's a nice stuff. But at the beginning, you are not, you are not yet humble because that's why you came. God should bless you. If God had blessed you, will you come? <laughs> so. <laughs> Stay tuned. Apostle Divine will be right back. To get a full copy of this message. Call us on these numbers, plus 237-652-848-668-6788-673666. Or email at transformerstv at yahoo.com. Apostle Divine C.O. Kefor. Major. <laughs> 